2002 election debate. Now, let's meet the candidates. Hello again, and welcome to this News 12 Long Island debate for Nassau County's special election. I'm Scott Feldman. For the next half hour, we're going to be speaking with the candidates running in the first legislative district. Democrats controlled the 19-member legislature with a 10 to 9 majority until Patrick Williams resigned and pleaded guilty to federal fraud charges involving mortgage applications in his job as a broker. Now, the first covers the communities of Hempstead, Uniondale, Roosevelt, and Freeport. Running on the Republican, conservative, and right to lifelines is Ricky LaRosa from Uniondale. He's a career counselor for the town of Hempstead. His challenger, Kavon Abrahams of Hempstead, the legislative majority budget director. Kavon is running on the Democratic, Independence, Liberal, and Working Families lines. Gentlemen, welcome to News 12 Long Island. Thanks for joining us. Under the debate rules, candidates will have one minute for their opening statement. Each candidate will then have a minute and a half to answer a question and 30 seconds for rebuttal when needed. And finally, there will be time set aside for closing statements. Speaking order was decided by lot ahead of time. We will hear first from you, Kevon Abrahams. Thank you, Scott. Um, thank you, Scott. Uh, I like to say I, any type of forum like this definitely gives people the opportunity, the voters, an educated opportunity to hear the platforms of both candidates and at the same time uh, so they can make an educated decision on September 10th. Hello, my name is Kevon Abrahams. I am honored to be here today as a candidate for the first legislative district here in District 1. I believe that our community has a shared vision, one that will be relentless and forwarding that we basically foster that community services such as child care, such as affordable housing, such as economic empowerment are very important to our community. I believe that right now our community has settled for the status quo. The status quo being that it has been always done that way. I will be a relentless voice in Nassau County that will not settle for the status quo and will step up when it comes to economic disrepair and community issues. I pledge that on that day I will be your candidate and your legislative voice in the legislature. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Abrahams. Now your opening statement, Ricky LaRosa. Yes, Mr. Feldman, thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ricky LaRosa. I am very honored and very proud to be the candidate of the Republican Party, the Conservative Party, and the Right to Life Party. I, I was born in Costa Rica, Central America, came to Long Island at the age of five. I attended Freeport and Uniondale School Districts, graduated Uniondale High School. Presently, I work as a career counselor for the Hempstead Works Project in the town of Hempstead, where I see firsthand at the front line the needs of our community as they come in there looking for jobs and also when their unemployment has just run out. And they go, it goes beyond that now to the point where they're losing their homes. And the Democrats are now proposing, on top of the 15 percent increase, a recent increase, they're now proposing a 19.4 property tax increase. That is not acceptable as your legislator. I will vote no. Thanks, Mr. LaRosa. Let's start with the questions and uh, follow up. Right when you talked about the tax increase, Executive Swazi has proposed a 19.4% increase in the county portion of the property tax. That's for the 2003 budget, which uh, is unveiled around September 17th. Do you support or oppose that and why, Mr. Abrahams? Well, right now, I think we have to look at the budget in its context. I mean, right now, we have the revenue side of the budget, which generally we have, right now we have the revenue side of the budget, which generally is sales tax and property tax, which is made up more, mainly of the revenue side. If we're going to look at the expenditure side of the budget, let's say, for like example, if when you look at the pie of $2.3 billion, which is being spent on the expenditure side, you have $1 billion of it, which is tied into union agreements, so it's untouchable. I mean, you see the fights that we have with the unions in trying to get any labor concessions, so from that standpoint, that's pretty much untouchable. There's a lot of money which is tied into direct assistance and mandated services, as well as um, contractual agreements that are basically keep the county going, such as road repair and construction and all the services that are very vital to our community. So from my standpoint, it's very easy to say that we're not again for the 19.4 because basically, you know, it's, it's just the rhetoric that's been out there. I mean, working at the legislature for the last two and a half years, I've seen, you know, the Republican rhetoric about we will not support 19.4, we will not support any tax increases. But my idea is bring solutions to the table. Basically, I've set pretty much an, a standard for what we have in terms of the expenditure side of the budget. If we're going to look at solving this problem, this $428 million problem, which is looming by 2005, let's be clear. Let's come out with ideas. If they're going to be expenditure reductions, 
let's see. I want to see the, the proof is in the pudding, is the way I look at it. Okay. Mr. Uh, LaRosa, you said in your opening you opposed the 19.4% increase. Expand on that a little. Why? Okay. Um, my opponent here does not live in the real world when it comes to the residents in our community. Our residents, most, for the most part, are basically living on paycheck to paycheck. They're one paycheck, two paychecks away from being homeless or losing their mortgages. Our residents in District 1 cannot afford one more increase, 1%, 2%, much less 19.4%. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay? We, we can do, we can reallocate the, uh, f these expenditures that, that we have, okay? Let's, we can move things around. I agree with the opponent when he says the contractual and the mandated service are, have to be um, stay the way they are. I agree with that. However, we can use, there's money monies in contractuals and the private contractors that are getting. We have to seriously, both parties sit down and address that issue. There's a lot of party patronage going on there. And we have to stop that for the benefit of our community, not just District 1, for the whole county. Okay. And also, we can find creative ways. The county owns a lot of property, okay? And one of the problems we have is affordable housing. Let's build some afford affordable housing on those county properties and have controlled rent. And that will definitely, number one, help our residents. Number two, bring extra revenue, which we don't have now in the county without increasing the taxes. Mr. Abrahams, your response? I mean, I, 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 I respect Mr. LaRosa. Um, but however, his, his comments are just not correct. I mean, let's be very clear. I mean, basically, I've been working in the budget office and have a very, very comprehensive knowledge of what's been going on in Nassau County. Nassau County is facing a $428 million debt, which is real. Basically, a control board could come in at any given time to basically take away controls for Nassau County. Right now, we are faced with a very tough decision. 19.4 is not the best solution. It's the only solution after years of Republican mismanagement. And for rhetoric to be out there that we need to shift around expenditures, I think is pretty much unfair. Okay, Mr. LaRosa, final word on this issue. Again, Scott, we cannot afford, okay? Residents in my district and in Nassau County are moving, okay, as a career counselor. They're asking me to find help and find jobs in Georgia, the Carolinas, Maryland. They are literally moving. These are homeowners, okay, even some of the residents are not homeowners. The, the new generation here cannot afford, unless you're making probably 60000 or plus, you cannot afford to buy, to buy housing as a county, and not too many of our residents make that money. That's right. not realistic. Let's take a short break. We'll be back with more of our debate for Nassau's first legislative district. Don't go away. Imagine being able to move your entire...